Welcome to the Alphamine Podcast with me, Stephen Goldstein, and my co-host, Mark Randall, where we explore trading and investing through the lens of a performance model. At Alphamind, we see trading as a performance activity rather than an academic activity. And to that extent, we focus on the performance aspects of trading. We look at behavior, mindset, psychology, and the actions that you can take to become better and the reason and rationale behind the why of trading. We talk with practitioners, traders, investors, and analysts. We speak to psychologists and coaches and mindset experts. We chat with authors who have written about trading, and we converse with experts in fields which can bring something of value to the discussion about trader performance. In keeping with this theme, today we are talking about journaling. Journaling is one of the most useful activities a trader can engage in to help them become better traders, to power their development, and to help them refine their practice. On the other hand, it is one of those activities that people think, I know it's useful and will really help me, but I think I'll do it another day. The exceptions are usually the exceptional people. People who are willing to go the extra mile, put in the hard yards, and take the time to learn about themselves and their trading. Our guests today are Steve Ward and Simon Cotterill. Together, they have conceived, constructed, and published an outstanding new book stroke journal called the Traders Mind Journal. This is the best published trading journal we have come across. And when we found out about it, we immediately contacted them to ask them to come on the show and talk about journaling and their new book. We are also delighted to announce that listeners of the Alphamine podcast can obtain a 15% discount off the face value of the Traders Mind Journal. If you go to the Alphamine blog at alphamineblog.blogspot.com or Google Alphamine blog, you will find full details of how to obtain this discount. Before we start, a few words about our sponsor, the Society of Technical Analysts, the STA, and their brilliant technical analysis home study course. If you are keen to develop your technical analysis skills and take your knowledge and understanding of them to the very highest level, then this is the program you should be considering. As one of the lecturers on the full program, I am fully aware of the high quality of the home study course, which has been written in partnership with many leading figures from the world of technical analysis. And since the STA is a not-for-profit body with a history going back over 50 years, you can be certain that only agenda is your education, development and growth. We are delighted to announce that the STA are offering a discount on the full cost of the home study course and the home study course and diploma program to listeners of the Alpha Mind podcast. To find out more about the home study course and how to get the exclusive Alpha Mind discount, visit the Alpha Mind blog page where you will find a link to the home study course at the top of the page. Go to alphamindblog.blogspot.com or just Google Alphamind Blog. Now, on with this week's podcast. Welcome to this week's Alphamind Podcast. And today we are delighted to have with us Steve Ward, who's a returning guest. Uh, and Steve Ward has been the author of a couple of, I suppose you could say, best selling books on trading psychology, trading mindset, trader performance. Um, Bulletproof Trader was one of them. Uh, high performance trading was the other one was that that's correct? right and then trader mind as well trader mind as well yeah. and you have a partner on this we have with us simon cotterall did i pronounce it correctly yes you did thank you yes <laughs> who, who is a retail trader very successful retail trader and we're going to learn a little bit about simon but re- really we're here to talk about a new uh, a new book like what a new journal they've produced together um for traders called the trader's mind journal um, which I'm just flicking through in front of me, which I've already started using, actually. And it's, uh, it's a brilliant new book, which is there to help provide almost like um, a format for traders to journal. Um, it's in hardback version here. Um, it's available online and they're here to talk about it. And so welcome to the Alpha Mind podcast, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Mark. Maybe you can start by... Again, just reintroducing yourselves to people who aren't familiar. Yep. So, yep. So, hi, my name's Steve Ward. Um, I guess trader performance coach is how most people would would know of me. My expertise, my interest is in trading performance, psychology and physiology, a little bit about philosophy as well. Been working with traders uh, across a whole range of experiences from beginners through to, I guess, market veterans, 30 years plus, um, primarily in institutions, so banks, hedge funds, commodity trading houses, prop groups, asset managers, energy companies, and then uh, a little bit of work with the retail space as well. And I've been doing that since uh, early 2005, so over 16 years now. Prior to that, 
Um, I was working as a sports psychology coach in um, elite sport, over 30 different uh, teams and um, of different sports all across the globe. Also spent a bit of time working with professional poker players on the European Pro Tour. And um, yeah, as Steve said, author of, of a few books on trading psychology and performance. And, uh, and my outlier book, as I refer to it, is a book called Sports Betting to Win, which came about um, after doing some work for a, for a hedge fund, essentially, that um, was betting on sports markets as opposed to financial markets. Wonderful. And Simon, over to you. Hi, yes, I'm uh, Simon Cottrell, um, basically trader um, and fund manager. Uh, I've been trading now for about so coming up to 13 years, I think it's been. Um, uh, and yeah, a bit of a, a unique story into the industry. I was in uh, the printing game beforehand um, and basically um, got out of, of printing and was looking for a, another career. Um, I actually did some time in just sales consultancy um, and I effectively fell in into trading uh, because one of my friends ran a small boutique fund and effectively just said to me, you know, do you know that you can you can trade for yourself, uh, which which I, I didn't. Um, and basically I got the start, I suppose, with very many other retail traders. I traded for myself, did well, did terribly, lost it all. Um, but then thought to myself, actually, I actually really like this industry and, and I feel that I may have something to bring to it. So I took myself off for a year, um, just read everything I could, um, spoke to everyone I could, um, had a bit of a sabbatical. And basically then I came back to it a year later and I uh, treated it as a business, um, as I had done with you know previous um, things I've done. And that's obviously where I'm, I met Steve. Actually, I met him at the um, Society of Technical Analysts. Um, he was giving a talk. And then, yeah, then my journey um, from that point was never to get into the professional side, um, basically just to trade for myself. Um, I was looking for uh, the lifestyle um, and not in the sense of the lifestyle of, um, you know, the terrible retail um you know, myth of sitting by a pool, but as in um, the lifestyle, as in to up my own hours, uh, you know, to effectively be running a business um, type. And, and effectively, I, I, you know, I, I did well. Um, I got found by a professional trader uh, who was a, a fund manager who employed me. And again, was out of the blue, um, or not what I was, it was my direction, did well. Um, and then effectively, I went out on my own um, to run a small fund, um, and obviously then I have that journey of all the setbacks of regulation and running that uh, an actual business whilst trying to trade. And yeah, and then basically I've been trading um, out of my own since about 2015, 16. Um, and yeah, it's, it's going well. And um, yeah, that's where I am. My day job is uh, trading. Um, I've got a few people helping me run the fund. Um, and obviously, um, you know, working with Steve on the Traders Mind Journal. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. And we'll come on to that Traders Mind Journal in a minute. Um, it's a fascinating journey because it's quite an unusual one um, from printer to trader. And back to printer again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> back to printer again. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I guess that, that, that must it's have Massively, helped, massively. Yeah, massively. Yeah. Yeah. We'll come back to that in a minute, but you know, just just quickly for our audience, um, because they love to hear success story. Um, you know, so many people try trading, so few people make it. So, so what what was it for you? I mean, first of all, what markets you trade in, what products, and then, you know, what 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 do you put it down to that made that made the breakthrough for you that that perhaps helped you where, where other people could learn from that? Um, so it's trading forex and uh, precious metals. Um, they're the two items I concentrate on. Uh, reason being for me is that I'm a discretionary uh, trader. I suppose industry, you would call it a chartist, so I'm very visual. Um, right. I'm, I'm looking at, at the screens. Uh, price determines everything I do. Um, and I feel that Forex and uh, some of the precious metals um, fit in, into that niche that, that I've found. Um and I would say, you know, it's a very complicated question, obviously, what, you know, why are you successful? Or uh, I wouldn't even class myself as successful. I would say consistent, um, okay. that, that, you know, I, I, that I'm I'm consistent and 
basically out what I would put that down to is finding something uh, that's very personable to me. Um, I think that I, you know, trade well discretionary, um, you know, looking at the charts, um, I suppose, you know, in the loosest sense of the terms is technical analysis. Um, so I, I think that finding that for me personal it is very important. Um, and I think being analytical um, and treating it as a business with capital preservation is just my sole aim. And that process of step by step building, I think, has helped me, you know, steadily, steadily grow. And um, I suppose one of the, the key steps was the light bulb moment that, you know, I bang on about, about realizing that psychology was the most important part. Um, and, I, you know, I was doing well trading because of the, uh, you know, the systematic pro approach I had to the actual trading and the analysis and the application um, of trading. But it was the realization of psychology and mindset um, that actually took it a step further, um, I would say. So, so I, th I, th I think it's, yeah, just slow and steady progress, um, lots of lists, um, um, you know, a lot of forward planning, a lot of analysis, a lot of reviewing. Um, and I think that process has, has, has helped me, um, you know, be, become a consistent trader. And that's, I mean, that, that's great to hear. I mean, it'll be great for our sponsor, who, who is the STA. To, uh, to hear you <laughs> I say did not that. know that, by the way. <laughs> you, you did know that, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be a nice little plug for them. Um, it, it's it, it's just a really good story. And But, you know, what, what really grabbed me there was where you said you viewed it as a business. And a lot of people don't. that They view it as or they forget it's a business or they, they view it as an activity and it, they almost are looking to be right. They, they view it as a puzzle and they forget the business. So it's how can I be right? And it's not always about being right. It's about making money and that's what businesses do. Um, so, so I think, I think that's one thing that's really interesting when you said that. And as businesses, you know, it's like having stock, you get rid of bad stock you cut losses. You know, when you have good stock, you bring more on. You know, that's selling there. Let's bring more on. And it's almost the same way with trading. You know, get rid of the stuff that's not working and keep the stuff that is working and do more of it. So th there's something in there that, that is there. But yeah, I, I want to move on a bit to the journal. But I want to bring in Mark because, Mark, you said something really interesting at the start of our chat, even before we we had the podcast recording about the journal i want to rewind slightly because of course we're hitting an audience that may not have a clue what a journal is about frankly okay so i think to actually ask the question well and i think perhaps steve and simon you you can answer on this okay what was the driver behind it okay what uh, what and what is a journal uh, and why why at this point in time did you suddenly think this is something that we want to put together okay. Do a couple of things first, Simon, and then I can see, is that all right? So I think yeah, sure, um, yes. my, my first yes, thing would be, I think you're right, a lot of people maybe won't know what a journal is, but they might be more aware maybe if we use the phrase trade log. I think I think that's a familiar term for traders. So, you know, I think lots of traders think about uh, a journal, they probably are confusing it maybe with, more with a, just a log of our trades, which could be handwritten, could be a spreadsheet, could be done obviously on, on, on software. So... And what we've done isn't one of those, actually. So I think if we, if we kind of say there's this, the classical trade log, a log of your trade where you can extract your metrics from is kind of maybe one um, subdivision of journaling. And then what, what we've gone for, based on my interest and what Simon, when we first met, was talking about, uh, is this kind of mind journal, which is all the other things about journaling, which is how do I mentally prepare for the day, get emotionally ready for the day, get organized for the day, how do I review my day, review my trading, my decision making, what's going well, not going well? How do I turn that into learning? How do I take learning insights into actions? How do I um, have some kind of goal setting process that I can um, do over um, a time frame? How do I make sure that those goals become actions across different time frames? How do I take my daily or my trading analysis and, and look at it over a, maybe a weekly um, check in, as we call it? How do I take the weekly and put it into the monthly? So kind of how do I organize it and structure it as a 
say, a, more of a performance framework. So kind of all the things that, if you imagine that there's the, the trading going on in the middle and, and the process execution, and then everything around that, which supports that within the mind and the body and, from the, and the behavioral side, that's what we've kind of packaged um, or tried to package or focus on in the mind journal. And, um, and I think those two, they could be the same. So a person could um, collate those into one place. But I think sometimes the metrics has a really good um, natural place to be on like a spreadsheet or some software where you can, you know, you're putting in numbers and you can then mine that data um, in interesting ways. But 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 both Simon and I have, have, have agreed on that for our journal, we've done it handwritten on purpose because we find, and this is based on our own experiences, um, that the writing down has a very different mental processing when you're doing it. And the science does support that. The brain activity when you're uh, doing cursive handwriting is not unlike it is in meditation and mindfulness type practices. Um, it's slow, it's deliberate, you're more thoughtful. Uh, so we've gone for that format specifically with a, a mental, emotional, performance, behavioral format. Um, and we just kind of felt, yeah, that, that would be the, you know, um, the most effective way to kind of really capture sort of the psychology and the thoughts. Um, but, but, but the idea behind it all was much as I've written about journaling a lot in, in my books and much as Mark and you, you and Steve, I know, talk a lot about journaling. I think everyone in our field knows it's important and does it simon was the main thrust behind this particular project so um and he's got an interesting angle actually i think which again like his story which is fascinating uh is also really interesting so simon i'm gonna let you talk about the the light bulb journaling moment yeah the light bulb um well obviously you know the first light bulb was obviously working out the psychology of mindset as i said before was was the most important part and um, you know, was the reason why you would be, as, as you would call, successful. But it seems simple when I when I say it back. But effectively, it was, well, I'm sitting here, you know, inputting, as you say, my trading log, entry, exit, position size, you know, taking a screenshot of my chart when it was in, so, you know, all, all these analytics that I used to sit there on a Sunday and go through and analyze to death and, you know, and, and work out, you know, what to do in the coming week um, to work out in my mind different scenarios of how I would deal with that. And as I said, it seems pretty simple, but I thought to myself, well, why am I not recording in a repetitive manner the psychological side? Because I've had this light bulb moment that psychology is the most important thing. And hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm slightly intelligent enough to remember you know, Cable's position or the the trade I took on a Wednesday last week. But actually, when it comes down to it, I, I can't remember how I was feeling that day or I can't remember my preparation for that day. And, you know, and I had all these lists about um, my routine of the day, about getting up, thinking about three things to be grateful for, um, you know, all the standards of like making your bed you know think, things like that and, and I had all these different lists of, of of the routine of the day of my preparation you know what I did at, at, at the end of the day and I just thought to myself well if psychology is really important and all these analytical data entries are really important to make sure my trading's you know amazing I should be putting these two together so that's where the idea of the um, traders mind journal came was basically to have everything I was doing in list wise and review wise, I'm putting it down. And as Steve said, having it next to you on your desk so you have a deliberate um you know thought process, you can take a pause. Um as I think trading is obviously people think it's you know very manic and very quick paced when actually even if you are you know uh, trading within say 90 seconds the slowing your thought process down, even within that very short time period, is, is obviously super, super important. Um, and to give a practical example, as in, you know, writing down a mistake, pausing, writing it down, it takes it out of your mind, takes away the mental capacity of worrying about it. You can think about it later. And the actual, as I said, Steve knows the amazing science behind it. But for me, just practically writing that down on a piece of paper takes it out of my mind. I can deal with it later in the evening or the review on Sunday and I can get on with my day-to-day -day, day trading. So, so yeah, it's just very simply taking the mindset and psychology analytics in a sense and putting them down on paper as I go 
so I can I can review. And Steve and I um, painstakingly basically put the journal together to have obviously all these analytics to see what is important, but to have the flow so we can have the daily uh, log in a sense, to have the weekly check-in, um, and then obviously to have you know the monthly review. Um, and finally, just to say also about the learning side, every day I'm, I'm always learning. So I'm either reading a chapter of a book or I'm reading an article. And I also wanted within the journal to have that recorded in the sense of a, a progression um, so you so you can also have as we've called it mastery but basically have a learning process through through the journal as well because I, I think it's very important to again on the psychological side ha- have a constant learning process because it's a new industry to me you know I think it I think it's slightly more difficult to know about than it is to learn you know what a flag is or what head and shoulders is it, it's uh, it's hard to put into words, but it's, it's um, you know, when you say psychology, you, I, I, before I did this, I just thought oh, that is just way too complicated and airy fairy for me. I will never get my head around it. So I, I wanted to put it into a very structured framework, as Steve would call it, you know, very analytical. So we could or I could go through and analyze all this and improve on it, basically. That's great, and 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 I, and I will. I think we will later in this episode just go through it a little bit to look at some of these um, features that you've put, which I think are brilliant in the book. But it, you know, you, you have raised some really important points that you know. It, it, I, I I used to keep journals when I was a trader. You could probably see a pile of them down there, and and, and I talked to a lot of my clients about the value of journaling. I didn't always use a journal. It was in a later stage of my career. Um, I was a, probably a bit lazy in my early career. I started them and then I forgot about them. Um, I think much later in my career, I was much more serious about trading. I know that sounds a bit ridiculous, but you know, there, there comes a point where um, you, 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 you know, you, you, you want to improve, you want to grow, you want to develop, you want to get better. And so many people I've read about, written about the value of journaling, and so many great traders. That I'd read about we're doing it and I'm thinking well surely I should be doing it if they were doing it so I started keeping these journals and you're right the writing the act of writing mm. is incredibly powerful because it engages different parts of the brain and like you said Simon it slows you down and it takes you out of where you were and as I just want to share a very quick story if I can indulge myself a little bit of one thing that happened when I was tra- journaling which was um it turned out to be one of my best ever trades. And I, I can tell you when it was. It was 2007. I was um, really into journaling at this point. And I, I, I'd got myself in a real mess. So I was trading. I was trading the, the, the rate markets, the, the bond markets. And I'd had a very strong view, based partly off both fundamentals and technicals, that was really, in late 2007, bearish on rates, bullish on bonds. And I was, I positioned myself going into a Fed meeting to 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 be a certain way around. Um, and, and what happened was the Fed announced, Bernanke announced, Ben Bernanke, that they were going to cut rates probably at the next meeting. And a little fist pump comes up. And then the market did one of these things where it just corrected very aggressively after the meeting possibly because they hadn't actually cut rates. And, and to me, it made no sense at all. And I just sat there. But I'd forgotten that I'd left a stop in the market. Just, <laughs> you know, go, for me, you should never go into a Fed meeting with a big announcement. I, I would always take the stop off and then put it back on. I would have a, a dead man stop sort of further back. But I, I would just remove that stop. And I kind of forgot. And the market did this correction, hit the stop. And then I remembered it just after it hit it. You know, um, it, it was with a broker. So I had the broker went, field on your stop, Steve. And I'm like, what? What's going on? Um, I, I, by the time I'd like, what, what do you mean I'm field on my stop? The market had already come back 10 ticks. I'd literally got stopped at a high of the day. And now I'm thinking, where am I going to get in? Where am I going to get in? I've got to get this back on. By then, the market moved really aggressively. Now I'm 20 ticks away. 
on a big position in a really volatile market. Okay, and I'm, you know, this is some serious six-figure P and L, both lost and, and 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 left left on the table. And I was I was beside myself, and I didn't know what to do. And I went home that night fuming. I actually got two speeding tickets on the way home from work that night. That's how sort of discombobulated I was. Um, and I remember coming into work the next day on the Friday, and the market had sold off another 20 basis points. So I'm now 40 points away from a move I was in having been stopped, and I was livid. And uh, that weekend I went away with a group of friends to Ireland. We had a planned weekend. And I uh, I remember just literally looking at the bottom of a, a scotch glass the whole weekend and not talking to anyone. Came back in on the Monday and the Tuesday and the markets moved further and further and I haven't got this trade on. And I'm like, it, it was one of the worst feelings. I was kind of at an all time low. Now, this wasn't just so much about the money lost, but the opportunity for con that I was in. You know, and I remember picking up my journal, line, you know, sort of bind, you know, sort of a line written binary journal. I, I don't know what made me do it. It was always sitting on my desk. So it was always visible. And I just started writing. And I just did a kind of brain dump. I think it was about five minutes. I must have written three pages. And it broke me out of my thinking where I was stuck. I was stuck. And it was, I then asked myself the question in the journal. If you didn't have this view, do you, would you put this on now? And it was like, yes, this has still got a long way to go. Even though I've missed a lot. What am I doing? I'm just like a deer in the headlights. I would put this on. And where would you put it on now? How would you put it on? How much would you risk? Where would you leave your stops? And I worked out a whole new trade based off that. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm like, what I mean, so I put it on with the stops, sized how much I was going to risk everything. And it turned out to be one of my best ever trades. Now, had I not written up in my journal, I don't think I'd have had that awareness, that realisation, that moment where my thinking changed and broke. You know, so the act of writing, yeah. you it's know, great itself example is very thing, powerful. That, that, um, um, in that the, when, when traders are having these challenging situations, the thoughts and emotions can be quite overwhelming um, and you can kind of get caught up in them. Um, there's, there's a great book, George Mumford's book called um, The Mindful Athlete, where he talks about how mindfulness, might you probably know this, you know, he talks about you know, being like the eye of the hurricane, like the calm center. And I think the, the, the challenge is sometimes we get wrapped up in these thoughts and emotions and when we're kind of in them. It's like being in sort of the river and then you you become very reactive to them or you kind of get so overwhelmed just trying to survive that you can't really think clearly. And I think once you start, once you start to write them down, I think the slow, deliberate process of writing them down, it, it slows you down, kind of draws you towards the calm centre. But I think also what happens is, and this will be a process Mark will be aware of from his mindfulness um, expertise, is the process of diffusion, which is basically the acknowledgement of thoughts and emotions as thoughts and emotions we're having, but that we're not the thought and the emotion. So when you're writing down a thought, we also know that we're writing down our thoughts. And when we're writing down about how we're feeling, we are also aware that we are writing down about how we are feeling. So we are not the thought, we are not the feeling, but we're writing down the thoughts and feelings we are having. And that gives us a bit of distance and space, which again is calming. But, but as you then moved on to, as we move into that calm centre, even though the market can still be doing what it's doing around us, your perception and awareness of the market is different. And then the ability to form a plan as you did very effectively from that calm center changes. And that process and the process of going from being in the storm to being in that calm eye, I think you know, that journaling is one methodology, you know, and obviously Mark and I both share an interest in mindfulness work. That's another way as well, but obviously, and they can be combined, but that, but as you described it, as you were talking it through, it just felt to me exactly like that process of, you know, getting the thoughts and feelings out, making, becoming consciously aware of them, having them in front of you, clearing, you know, get, reducing the intensity, getting a bit of clarity, and then being from that, from that different position, being able to see things differently and, and, you know, take effective action, which also you did very effectively.
We will return to the podcast shortly. First, a quick word about our podcast sponsor. This podcast is sponsored by the Society of Technical Analysts, the STA. We are delighted to be able to promote their brilliant STA technical analysis home study course. Listeners to the Alphaman podcast interested in studying for the home study course can get an exclusive discount by visiting the Alphaman blog page where they can find a link to the home study course at the top of the page. Go to alphamineblog.blogspot.com or just Google Alphaman blog. Now back to this week's podcast. No, I, I think, you know, it, it, it's com- complex, right? Trading is just not about trading. You've got, you, you've got, you've got your life in the background as well. Um, and actually the opportunity with, 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 the, with the available space to complete things within the journal here, and I, I think it's certainly you almost need a sort of um, uh, a slight guide for people as well to don't, don't just put trading stuff down there, put other stuff down there that, that's inspired you. You know, well, you know, what have you done to – how have you rested today? Um, you know, how have you let go? What, what what tools did you use to let go of a particular um, event? And almost like describe how you let go of something um, if it was, was pure pain because, you know, we're trading. You get, you're gonna, if you've not had pain yet, you're going to get pain at some point. So learn, <laughs> learn how to deal with it. Um, so I think, I think there's opportunity to give a bit of an extra guide as well for folk to – don't just get stuck in the trading world and that's your world because actually there's so much that goes on. You know, how, how, how you lived your weekend and how you engage, what your background purpose is, um, could actually put you in, in a very, very different mindset if, you know, all, all of that world is a total mess because you bring that into your trading day. So getting people to create a sense of balance. And I really, really like the trading performance scorecard review because it kind of dips into that. You know, it dips into composure and mastery and resilience and focus, uh, motivation, discipline, energy and mind. And I would say there's this other thing called purpose as well that perhaps needs to be part of that, um, perhaps in a, a different space in the journal. But we, we need to be reminded of the fact that if we do feel we've got a better purpose and we've got balance and we've, we've got all our, you know, our hydration sort of out, as you know, Steve, that, you know, from an elite performance point of view, if you're not getting the right amount of oxygen, you're not getting hydration, not getting the mind to rest, you can do as much mindfulness as you like. <laughs> but your, your system's broke to start with. But reminding people to hydrate as part of the story, I think, I think it's an opportunity. You know, this thing is not, this not, is not setting stone, right? Because it will evolve over time. And, and the other thing I really, really like about it is that you get a sense of closure when you're shut in this, doc, this book. Because it is a big book, so when you close it, you sort of almost get a sense that you're you're closing it. You're not just, you know, just put it, putting a piece of paper away. You're literally shutting a book on the emotion that's inside it, and you have to physically open it and make physical effort to go back in time to look for something, rather than have tabs that take you back in time. So a lot of people use tabs and they have little highlighters. You know, this was my disastrous day. Let me find it so easily that I relive the experience and get totally stressed about it again. You don't need that. Um, and certainly in any sort of guide you, you put out, that if someone's writing down something that was highly distressful, uh, highly stressful and distressing, that they, they make a clearer note of what the positive outcome was and the action they did to get over it. So that if they do go back and come across that that very negative pain, um, they actually see the sort of fact that well they got over it and they did this to uh, achieve it because of course that could be very good reference point for for them and their experience going forward. Um, yes, I mean I, I I love it. I think it's 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 you know it's gonna continue to uh, to grow as um, a, a very very good piece of work. And I think you've got to be congratulated both of you. Um, Simon has been like the sort of the um, the case study almost, uh, you know, and of course, I, I suppose, Simon, the question is, is okay, you, you've co-designed, co-created, and it's landed. You've got this, You obviously, you've started using it. How, how has it changed you? Is it, have you suddenly found, actually, this is, this is, this is really beneficial? Well, well, no one will believe me, but actually, I um, have had a really bad start to the, well, not really bad, but I've had a bad start to the year, <laughs> and no word of a lie, I've been using the journal now uh, for close on to three months. <laughs> and I think it's one of the reasons, obviously not the main reason, but one of the reasons why my 
uh, trading has has um, has turned around. <laughs> but you know, uh, with with me producing it, um, but also Steve will will have a wry smile because this project initially was so I could have a journal, <laughs> and um, Steve now calls it that like the most expensive personal journal for me, <laughs> <laughs> which, which he uh, is slightly angry about. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, 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 it honestly just came out because I wanted it. I want I wanted to use it. That's, that's why I. That's why I did it, and not on fault. Well, on fault, it's amazing, but it's grown into, as you said, this this proper hardbacked book. You know, for, um, because you know, initially it was it was it was not it was not it was not going to be that, and um, and yeah, as I say just on a very personal note, I'm I'm using it and I love it, <laughs> so I'm happy. Yeah. That I'm out. <laughs> for, for the benefit of our audience, they'd probably be interested to know how it helped you turn around. You know, a difficult period. What was it that inspired you through that? Um, it very simply having my thoughts and the psychological mindset written down on paper, where previously, as I said, it, it was you know my own lists or or my own word documents, but having this physically next to me, um, stopping and filling it out, and obviously because it's new for me as well, so it, you know it would take me. A second to have a think about it you know when we write this what, what have i got to do here and answer this question it, so the the framework and the uh, it guiding just basically drew me out of the you know uh, bad situation uh, that i was in and a very similar story to yourself it just it refocuses you you recognize you know all the psychological um, issues that you're having you're putting them down on paper so you can you know, physically see them, you can think about them, you can discuss them with yourself or with, you know, another trader or, or you know, with a uh, another member of the family, maybe even. And basically, it just, it just takes you out and pauses you and refocuses. And so when you come to do your trading plan on a on a Sunday or on, on the weekend, you know, you're reinvigorated, you um, have understood all the psychological side. So, you know, you're not applying that terribleness to the market or to your plan. You know, you've separated it. So it, it was just basically formally separating everything out for me. And I and I think that it just, yeah, it just it just like paused me and let me reinvent it, it, in a sense of of what I'm doing. And also, so it also gave me back confidence, you know, in what I was doing because you you start to second guess yourself and think, oh, you know. Is this working now in this market? You know, post COVID, uh, and it just, it just, you know, it, it just gives you confidence to say, actually, no, I, you know, I've been right for the last five years. It, what I'm doing is adaptable. Like, you know, I believe in myself to do this, and yeah, and, and just a sound silly of putting all this down on paper in a framework, and then be able to review it, and you're not thinking, or oh, you know, how was I feeling last Tuesday when I made that bad trade? Or you know, you know, because it's down on paper for me just makes it a nice flow through a review action recognize make a plan and move forward and it and it just got me out of um you know a bit of a bit of a drawdown so yeah so, so that that's that's one of the great things about journals which you know losing money is just a part of trading we all lose money we all have periods of underperformance there's always times where our uh system method or approach is going to struggle in different market conditions you know it's it wouldn't be normal if it wasn't thus um so there's always an ebb and a flow to the to our path to making money and hopefully the long term it's moving from the left to the right upwards but within that there's these big down drafts and periods and, and long periods sometimes where we struggle and it's during that time it, we really need something, you know, to remind us, like you said, that my approach works. Don't change it. And that's where we're tempted to change it. And that's where often it goes wrong. You know, we'll, we'll throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, and also, it can be good to look at the good times. And people forget that journaling is also not just when you're struggling, but capturing what you're doing well. So you can look back at that and think, just to remind yourself, you know, I did that well. What did I do going into it? There's a lot of value from looking back at 
what you do well and what you don't do well and seeing the patterns that the you know for me it's a little bit like steve and, and you really get this as a sports coach you know if you're a a bowler in cricket you can have a video of your style on repeat zooming in close hand to how you're letting the ball go and, and for our americans out there they'll recognize that in baseball you know the, the micro focus on the the movement of the wrist and then you can almost go back to what you're thinking as you move into that do you remember you know and then almost tracking your energy levels and is there an optimum point where you know sports does that sports science it's a mixture of bringing you know the data together with what you were thinking and what you were feeling and what you were doing now we don't have a video a way of recording a trader with a video this is about as close as you can get aligning it with your trading log and your data your training record yeah it, it um it reminds me and and i love seeing your pile of journals behind you steve because when i worked with athletes one of the things and this is where my passion for journaling has really come from is um when i was working with athletes the, the training journal or the training diaries is often called was a prized possession you know you would have your goals in there for the year for the olympic cycle um you'd have your training methodologies your training plans your training sessions your reviews your diets your coaches notes and it was it was like this powerful kind of book you know in the old days we used to use you know like a like the old uh, page with a diaries and, and in that sort of format so you know big chunky thing kept for the year stuff full of paper as well you know things paper clipped in shared with the coach shared with the psychologist opened up discussed scribbled in notes diagrams um, you know, quotes from pages of, of books that have been read or, you know, even the page pulled out of a book and stuck in and highlighted and just like this kind of organic document that was just the centerpiece of everything. And and over the years that I was working in sport, which is the early days really now, you know, uh, more evolved now in, in sports. Like, but this is 2000 to 2005, six. I loved sitting down with athletes and, and sharing that with them and, and seeing what was in there and, and kind of progressing that. And that was my vision when I started working in trading. In fact, in 2005, one of the first projects I did, we, we had a, uh, a trading performance program and I developed a, a journal for that program based on like an athlete's training diary. And, and they, they loved it again, but we made it organic, not just uh, not something you should do because you read it in a book or because, you know, you, someone's telling you, you should do it. You want to do it. You know, it's interesting. You're curious about it. You, you, you're looking for insights. You're, you know, it's like having a, scient a curious scientific mind about, you know, what you're writing and what it's showing up. But it has to be structured to some degree. It needs to be easy. It needs to be intuitive. You know, a lot of the barriers to journaling for traders are it takes too long. What does it give me that's useful? Um, you know, um, there's no kind of um, cumulative effect. So, you know, they, they do stuff. They write something down today. But then it's left for today, which can be valuable in some ways. But then there's also data that you want to be picking up at the end of the week or at the end of the month. So, you know, I think if you can make it simple and easy, intuitive, um, effective in terms of at the end of it, there's some value in keeping it. And it kind of rolls through with a bit of momentum. And we kind of use this kind of mastery idea that we wanted people to anybody who picked that journal up at any level of ability. The idea is if you keep it religiously for three months and you do all the activities, we would expect you to be in a better place. It might not be reflected in your PL, but in behavior and mental and emotional capabilities at the end of that three months. Uh, the challenge we've had, Mark, and you're right, there's so much more we could do with this, but you've seen it, it's 277 pages. And if you put one in each arm, you can do some pretty decent three kilogram dumbbell curls. So th <laughs> there's gonna be a trade of mind journal and a workout guide coming out soon. Um, <laughs> but the reality is we had to, we had to cut out I said to Simon, um, I mean, I've written some books and they're, they're challenging to write it. Steve, I'm curious where you get on with your book, actually, to find out for, before we finish off today. Um, but th it's difficult. But I found this harder because in a book, I've always written too much and tried to trim it down. But you can still get like 50,000 words in a book. Well, we've had to go down. I don't know what the word count is, but obviously lots of it's repetitive. It's, it's not a lot of it's not a lot of unique words because uh, the dailies are the same each day. The weeklies and monthlies are the same. And there's some unique content around that. But it was we had to throw so many ideas out because we were we we looked at other journals and we obviously spoke to people and if you put too much in it becomes a barrier to well i've got 15 questions to answer first thing in the morning and it puts people off so it's like well we can ask three questions but what are they going to be and at the end of the day we can have 10 questions or 10 things to record simon loves habit tracking he went like every habit tracked i was like 
It's great. It, I mean, Simon is super attention to detail. He's got so many um, interesting qualities that are undoubtedly behind his success. Um, but we had to kind of go, it's not a journal for me and it's not a journal for Simon. We had to look at the, kind of the whole broad nature, which is wide, as you know, with traders and fund managers and try and get something that might work for most people. But and you're right, Mark, it is going to be um, an evolving organic piece. We are literally saying to people, use it, give us your feedback. And obviously where there's also a mass direction around more of this, less of this, we're definitely going to try and um, update it. This is by no means anywhere near um, perfect. We just hope it's a good enough start to get people excited about journaling and then to engage with us to maybe try and improve it over time. That'll be, a, be our goal, Simon. Would you agree? Yeah. And, and I am uh, no writer, I, I can tell you. And I am. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I, I can I can talk about the subject. You know, I personally love the subject and what I do, but trying to put it down on paper was super difficult. And then, as Steve said, um, you know, trying to cram it down into a really focused, guided framework that's, you know, as in very helpful at the at the core, was basically two years of work. We've been working on this for for two years, um, and. And yeah, and we, you know, Steve's obviously a fountain of knowledge and absolutely amazing. And and yeah, his his repetitive question to me, Simon, this is not for you. <laughs> this is for, this is for other people. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm very proud of of how we've um, got it down to to what we think are, are the core issues, and and also the flow of it because. Um, we, you know, once we'd spent the the time getting the information, it was making sure that it's tracked across the day, the week, the month, and then the end of uh, journal review, because you know we we wanted, in effect, as in that a flow chart of of recording the data, analysing it, um, you know, recognition and awareness, and then obviously you know making sure that we can act on it. Um, and it will change the behaviour of of the of the trader. Um, and I and I personally think that that you know we've got there. But as you say, yes, it's um, an evolving thing, which I can see Steve <laughs> slightly cr- crying. <laughs> that um, but you know, addition to will be you know, you know slightly different as we get um, hopefully some some nice feedback. We also wanted to make it quite intuitive, so we didn't we didn't want to make it um too complex to use with you know like with very complicated questions uh so we wanted to we wanted to be quite intuitive to use we also wanted people to kind of have quite a lot of flexibility about how they recorded the information so you know the the use of just five circles you know like the stress level five circles now you can color it in you can tick box it you can write one to five in there so just allowing people a little bit of their own personality to come into that and and to be able to choose the questions that maybe on a certain day you want to answer or not answer. Don't feel you have to kind of stick to it. In you know, it's not the, it's not the way. It's just a starting point. Uh, and if people want to change, you know, a question every now and again and do it in their own way, that's fine too. Um, so yeah, and that's, you know, that the word flow. I think you know, just kind of there's a nice flow through it as you go through it. So you kind of picking up a bit of momentum as you go through it. Hopefully, the momentum builds. So, uh, but but wasn't easy. And, and just. And just you know, yeah, that's very true. And just to add about the creative spaces, yeah, if yeah. you want to, uh, you know, we 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 wanted to add some creative space in there, obviously at the back and obviously through the through the journal. So, um, you know, trading is very personable. It, it's about your personality, what suits you, and we want the journal, as Steve said, to, you know, have a framework, be guided, have a flow, but also, you know, to be personable to you and to have a benefit for what you know you put in it to obviously you get out that you know the most the most you can so uh, and again steve has been uh, amazing at, at guiding us to to do that um as he said to be intuitive and free-flowing it in a guided sense you know if that make if that makes sense just just to just just for the benefit of our audience again um and you know if you're at home thinking about this just i'm just going to perhaps describe some of the features that i'm seeing as i'm looking through the book um, as you can see, I've I've filled out a few bits for myself. But it works. It works for coaches as well. That, that's the <laughs> new product, um, coaches' mind right. journal coming out. We <laughs> trade marketing here. <laughs> but I, 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 I do I do do a little bit of trading by yeah. trading still. So um, there, there is a few mentions of uh, some of the things that I've noticed. But there's there's an action list. There's, there's key tasks for the day. 
some mental preparation, um, some market observations, notes and insights as a space to write that. Then there's, there's a daily evaluation. How well did I trade today? I put myself in the middle, three out of five that day. It was an okay day. I, I, I made some notes. You, you've got some good questions there that prompt me to think or prompt the, the journaler to think. And there's some, some self-observation in there. Um, and, and you've got that each day of the week, which is pretty good. And then you get to the end of this week and you've got... Um, the week in review, which I think is brilliant. I mean, that's great. You know, what what have I did? What have I done well? What could you have done better? What it gets you to think? What challenge or difficulty that you overcame? What did you learn from that? What action did you take? And, and this repeats all the way through. And you've got this. This is it a spider chart? Yeah, this is, um, is this so it's the trader performance different... scorecard. This is again Simon's initiated this idea. But basically, it's a, it's a wheel divided into eight segments. So it's kind of a, a slightly um, more advanced um, Trivial Pursuits um, wheel. Um, so you've got eight segments. And so we've just kind of developed eight kind of core areas of, of, sort of trading psychology and performance. And then at the beginning of the, of the journal, there's a kind of a double page spread explains what those eight areas are with a little bit of context about kind of, you know, how to know if you've got it or not. And then each week, there's a, a wheel and you've got um, the opportunity to kind of mark on that wheel going from the center being zero outwards to five, kind of what your score is on those eight areas. And then what we encourage, again, for those who want to, is you could just kind of put a checkpoint, you could write a number in there. But if you put all the dots in around the eight areas and join them together, you get like a spider diagram, as, you, as you've ex described it. So you can kind of immediately see visually, where was I stronger? Where was I not so good that week? And then the opportunity is to identify what you did well, so you can do more of that into the next week, but also maybe to notice where you weren't as strong or as consistent. And then there's an opportunity then to identify that and, you know, what might you do differently going forward into the next week. So that rolls on a, a weekly basis. And what we try to do is make sure that when you're doing the daily reflections, when you get to the end of the week, it's very easy to ask the same questions and do the same tasks, but just on a different time scale. But we wanted to give people something different to do, to engage the brain in a different reflective way and to have something visual to do and then when you get to the monthly review again you could just again use the same questions but change day to week or week to month but we try to make it different questions different activities so the monthly one really looks at you know the goal setting and we've got a bit about purpose in there which i know mark's mentioned which is really important so we've tried to kind of do i guess almost sort of the, the higher level you know goals purpose stuff you know the big picture planning and prep monthly the weekly is kind of the breaking it down and getting into it and then the day to day is like the nitty gritty stuff so it um but yeah, the, 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 the wheel, we, we, again, it's just, it, it's just something different. You know, just to engage the brain in a visual way, let, get the hand moving in a different way and, and see the results, see the data differently. Yeah, and you've got, you've got different exercises in there, thinking about thinking, yep. uh, developing emotional awareness, clarifying your process, which is, yep. I think that's a brilliant one. Yeah, so, so basically, Steve, just quick, sorry, I was going to say, so that's, that each week, so across the 12 weeks, there's a different mastery task, has a different, it's like, a, they're based around the themes of the Trader Performance Scorecard, so there's eight of those, plus four around kind of mastery and general performance improvement. So each week, for those who want to do them, there's a task there that you can do, which again, essentially is like a mentally emotional training exercise. Okay, and also you've got some great quotes in there. I mean, one of my favourite ones is this one with Vic, by Victor Sparandio. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I've ever said that. I love this one. The key to training success is emotional discipline. If intelligence were the key, there would be a lot more people making money trading. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can attest to that. That's very true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and again, the quotes, well, I mean, the quotes were, and Simon did a great job on this. We tried to all the it is relatively concise in terms of the quotes were chosen to reflect the themes of the journal. So they weren't just like random quotes that we liked. We looked at the eight performance scorecard topics, the theme of mastery in the journal, and then what's in the journal. And we tried to match the quote so that as you're going through it, it's almost like uh, you're, you're reading it, you're writing it, you're drawing it. And, but it's all, it's not random. It's all anchored into um, um, a core process of performance improvement in a relatively contained way so you know we've tried to make it not too random and sporadic for people so fantastic mark any thoughts yeah it's, it's a rose diagram from my uh, <laughs> glacial geomorphology <laughs> days uh, we're, we're talking about well, it's the guidebook it's a rose diagram we need to use the correct just, terminology i'm just an uneducated former trader <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. that's the <laughs> <of> <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but no, I, I think that, and of course those things, you, if you can almost take a picture of the samples of the rose diagram over time and notice almost like an animation. You can notice the difference and notice how you're developing your strengths over time uh, or, or coming across weaknesses that you need to work upon. I think I think it's a very, very good way of, of, of showing it. And it does, it does force the question, of course. It falls that self-analysis. But the other thing I wanted to say, I know I've talked about the structure of the book, because because actually you can do these things, but if you do them cheaply, they're, they're terrible. But this has not been done cheap. And one thing that strikes me is that it's very, very pleasant to write on the paper. The quality of the paper is really, really nice to the point that it just allows fluid writing because actually there's, there's some... I mean, Simon probably knows exactly what I mean from... <laughs> His, his, his printing experience. But some papers, it's just, like, it's just awful. But this has got quality. The paper sits oh, flat. Mark, it's like, uh, it's it's music story. to Simon's ears. You will not believe. That's, that's really I'm cool. saying, there's a story here, isn't there? There's a story here. I can see Simon laughing about but no, see, I mean, it's brilliant here because I say when, 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 when Simon presented this idea to me, in my head, I thought, right, quick, simple, spiral bound note ba- notebooks, few questions, a little couple of diagrams, self-assessment thing, you know, nine ninety nine. you know, bung it on the website. If people buy it, great. Give it to your clients. You know, they're like they're grateful for anything you give them for free anyway. Um, and that, that was it. And then it, almost two years later, with, you know, significant deficit in my bank account, uh, we've got what, what I am. I mean, I'm genuinely proud of it myself and Simon's done a great job, but I, but I cannot say enough. Um, if I had done that on my own, there is no way I could have got the content right or got the quality. But Simon, as you know, from Simon's story, his background in printing, I mean, the things he was talking about and getting the printers to do and pushing them on. If you had no industry experience, well, A, you'd got ripped off as, as, as I would have done. Um, but you would not have got it. But Mark, you're right. Simon's the, the, the attention to detail that Simon's put in around the lay flat. I'm really pleased because that isn't true of all journals and diaries. And you have to do it with, with particular binding and particular glue. So you have to know your stuff. Um, the paper quality, the covers, um, you know, the, the, the choice of cover, the colors, all of that. You know, Simon's expertise was phenomenal but it's not just the expertise it was just his drive to keep pushing and pushing and not to accept second best but you know to get the printer to go out and well this is what we want you're gonna have to find it um we're not going to accept you know a low quality paper we're not going to accept this we want two ribbons we want them in this color if they've got to come from china and they've got to come through the Suez canal and the ship's blocking the way get the ship out of the way (laughs) and get them to us and we'll wait an extra month um so i I know i'm just genuinely (laughs) pleased that you've noticed that because it's a great it's great for me, but it really, um, I think, for Simon, yeah. who worked so hard on that side of it, I think it's fantastic to, to hear that. Yeah, but, but when, you, yeah. when you buy something, there's an expectation. So, so when I get this package at the door, has got what a DPD or whatever, I'm thinking, yeah, what, what's this? Because obviously I haven't got to yeah. <laughs> oh, This is pretty damn heavy, whatever it is. I'm crying, it's the, it's, it's the trader journal. <laughs> oh, this is pretty, this is very, you know, like, like I can... Yeah, you know, the, it's all about yeah. the content. We, I know, but if you don't get the exterior, yeah, we right, wanted both. Paper, we wanted right, both. Might as well not bother. Yeah, yeah, and you've, you've achieved both. And I think that's um, well, that, that's what happens when you collaborate yeah. in the right sort of okay, way with the right people. Um, it's um, very kind. Yeah, I, I mine normally sends Steve over the edge with paper samples and hot <laughs> glues and laying flat. But yeah, we, we you know, Steve, Steve. Um, you know, obviously latest at my door, but um, he was involved at every step of the way. And yeah, um, picking the paper was super important to us because, you know, as we've just spent, you know, nearly an hour talking about writing down is one of the most important parts of journaling. If you're writing down on terrible paper and you smudge and, you know, and it just it, it just doesn't feel right, then, you know, it, it just, you know, it, it, it just, there's no reasoning journaling in the sense if you've not got that, you know, added quality, and then, and then, yeah, just the detail of it laying flat on on your desk, um, you know, is obviously important because it's a, it's obviously a coffee table type book, and you're writing in it, so it, it needs to lay flat. Um, so yeah, so we, you know, we spent a lot of time um, on the design and on the uh, feel, fit, and finish, um, so that the experience of journaling is just as important as the the information that you're you're, you're putting but that, in that's there. the thing simon we want it to be an experience and a joy yeah. for the trader not a chore 
Yeah, and we want to give the impression to the audience that, that's out there that actually that this is this is worth buying, guys. You know, that this is worth investing in because actually you won't be disappointed. But this this, this will up. change the trajectory of certain people's careers. They, they will be better off for purchasing this and maintaining it and starting a process of journaling. Somewhere in the future, they will be in a far better position than they would otherwise be. And that, that's really, exactly. I suppose, the purpose. Exactly that. I mean, this is not anyone who's ever published anything, either through a publishing house or self-published, uh, unless you're you know, writing a, you know, a best-selling novel. Um, it's not, you know, these aren't money making things. And it's, that was never our intention for Simon and I. Well, all Simon wanted was a good journal for himself. So that's why I would say it's the world's most expensive <laughs> journal because he's got one that's pretty good, but it's cost a, a fortune to get it. Um, of time, effort, <laughs> as well as money. But no, but for both of us, generally, it was we just wanted to create something that if journaling is important, we keep saying it and Simon was going to push it, let's create something. Um, but let's do the best that we possibly can, knowing it won't be perfect, but let's get something that's really valuable with the intention of not trying to, you know, sell millions or thousands, but just that if, so, as you said, if someone has that and they use it for three months or if they buy another one and go six months, whatever it is, and it makes a difference to that person, then the job's done because that's, that's what we want it to do is to make a difference for people. I'm, I'm just a big fan of if you love something, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone knows you, you do well at it. And I just wanted to create something that you would love writing in and journaling because then if you love it, you you know, you put more effort into it and it then becomes a bigger benefit. And, you know, I tried to put the, the love I have into my trading and I think that's why one of the reasons why I do well. And I think that, you know, I love journaling. So I wanted to journal into something that, you know, is 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 nice. And as you said, is you know, you've done smoke and it, lays flat and you know it it, it works because it, yeah there's, there's nothing worse than kind of writing something as all the pages are flipping back and forth and you know it just doesn't work yeah, absolutely this is coincidental but i've had a number and i'm talking about probably at least eight to ten clients i've worked with one-to-one -one this year who from sort of january through to, to current time now in some way or other, have asked me about how they could improve their journaling. It's all, it always comes down to things like, what questions should I be asking? When should I be asking them? Uh, what should I be recording? How should I record it? Should I do it on a spreadsheet? Should I buy some software? Should I buy a notebook from, you know, WH Smiths or, or whatever? Um, I always say, well, what are you doing already? And there's obviously a variety of things they, they are or they're not doing. We just try and build on that. But there's, there's, there just seems to be a lot of people who want to do it which is great but they're not quite sure how when what to write how to structure it you know how where do i write my goals is that is it part of the journaling or is it not part of the journaling where do i write my trades down so um in essence it gives them if nothing else if you know if they if they had it one and they use it for three months it might inspire them to then have a better idea about how to structure their own one which again we would be equally happy with if it helps a person to become just to create a more organized self journal for themselves. That's great too. Um, we just want really more people to be able to benefit from, um, you know, the, 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 the journaling experience. Cause we all know um, from our world, you know, how valuable it can be, but it's not valuable unless you do it and you do it consistently. So we want, you know, consistency for us is more important than intensity. So, uh, you know, little and often each day, each week, each month, but done cumulatively can be really powerful. So, um yeah that was really the goal where can people find out about this so website is um www.tradersmindjournal.com and that, that's obviously got the information about it and the um if they want to buy it then it's got the um the cart on there and simon i think we we did say we were if, if people wanted it we can we can have a special discount for your listeners if, if that would be useful yes AMP15 and they'll get 15% um, off if they just put that code in the discount code box. Okay, brilliant. So let me just make a note of that. Um, AMP15 yep. and maybe, maybe, and that could be in return for them tweeting when they get it, maybe sending a picture of it. Would be superb. <laughs> would be superb. So here's the deal. Here's the deal, audience. And we'll put it on our blog as well and our tweet. Put AMP15 in when you place the order and you will get it at a 15% discount. So what is already a very good price for what it is. Um, and then just agree to 
take a picture of yourself holding it or of your newly purchased book and tweet about it with a link back to your Twitter handle. Yeah, we're particularly interested in Warren sending his picture to us. Oh, yes, Warren Buffett, maybe when he can do <laughs> yeah. it. And if Elon could just buy one, that'd be... It, it, it has been nice, actually, because they've only, they've only just gone out. The first orders went out last week. And already we've had people who have actually received them who have sent photos in. And actually, it's really nice for us to kind of see it, you know, in a trading context, in a trader's hands. Some people have actually obviously started writing in them and, and sent us some feedback about, you know, what they've noticed by doing the journaling. So, you know, if people are willing to in some way, you know, uh, give that little bit of feedback, it, it is, it is um, yeah, it, it is good for us to get that. And again, if people do buy it and they use it for a period of time, and again, they've got feedback they want to share, again, you can go on the website, contact us, um, things that you like, didn't like, you know, things that maybe you're missing. So we, we are really open to having this as a, you know, almost like a bit of open source uh, software that everyone can add to and we can refine over time. We, we, we're not going to get it right for all people. There's too many nuances in, in individuals in, in trading, but we can certainly, I'm sure, uh, make it better over time for most people. But no, it, it, it's, it's not, when you look at the scheme of things as the products you're trading, it, it's almost free. Really? And the scale of what trading is all about and the opportunity of trading uh, and the, the, the potential failures of trading by not following process and not following, you know, the sort of things that this journal can, can help to sort of solve, um, you know, that sort of cost is just immaterial. And I think, you know, great that we've got the discount um fantastic well that, that is the hard yards of training i mean you know steve you're you, you're, you're from the sports world you know you know that if you're not going to go out and pound the streets early in the morning you're not going to get your speed down to run marathons you know you, you've got to put in the hard yards whatever you do and trading is a performance activity and for traders it's going through what can be sometimes quite a laborious process of the unsexy stuff of writing down re- recording and reviewing but that is where you get better that's where you get stronger i agree i mean if you look at most elite performers the reason why they're elite is because they're doing the unsexy and they're doing it consistently and most people don't want to do the unsexy once let alone do it on a daily basis that's why there's there's so few elite performers you'll see that you know we're going to see that in the olympics coming up over the next few weeks and uh you know we've we've, we've seen it obviously in the in the euros and we'll see it in sport, we see it in music, we see it in trading, investing, business, sales. You go to any elite area and the people at the top, they're doing, you know, generally the difference is the unsexy, the difficult stuff done consistently over time. That's what that's what's making the difference for most people. It's not it's not easy, but it does have a payoff. And I think that is our opening clip just there. I think that's the edit we're going to take out and put as that introduction. I think that was brilliant. OK. Listen, I'm aware of the time and we've, we've got to kind of wrap up. Um, any, any final thoughts? Anything you would like to add? Excuse me. Um, no, I, I don't know. No, I, I just think, um, yeah, I just hope the journal, um, you know, helps people, as Steve said, you know, um, put in the, the unsexy work, I suppose, to um, improve their, their trading. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I just I just think it's a it's a good guide to to help people through through that process because it's a it's a difficult world and it's um you know it's not easily explained or explained very well by many people obviously very eloquently by steve but not by many others and you know when you have the realization that it's the most important part but then you find it difficult to you know how do i work through that um you know it's um i think it's, it's very difficult so hopefully this this helps a little bit thank you Thank you. Thank, thank you guys for, for doing it. I think the, the community, the trading community, will be really grateful for you taking this step. And I, I hope over the next couple of years it flies off the shelves and it builds and it becomes something that everyone has to have. Thank you, Steve. And th- yeah, thank you for both of you for giving us obviously the time on the podcast. Much appreciated. It's a, it's a topic. It is a, it's almost like we all know how important it is, but it is an unsexy topic for many people. So hopefully the journal can make, you know, journaling a little bit um, either more sexy or less unsexy, whichever one kind of resonates. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, well, listen, just a, just a sort of a final comment, really. It, it's a beautiful piece of work, both in its construct and the way it's been thought out and laid out but also in, in, in the, the physical nature of the product. Um, and it's totally worth the value. So and I think every, every trader should get it. And, um, you know, and I think it's, as Steve said, it, it fills a gap. I mean, there isn't anything else that, 
like it out there. People have tried things and I guess like it gets ill-conceived and, and rubbishly put together and often come from people with it's just the wrong type of experience. But th this is super high quality and I think, uh, as Steve said, the industry will be very grateful to be able to access it uh, and particularly with AMP. 15, getting a discount on, on what is already a low retail price anyway. Thank, so, yeah. thank you both. Well and Mark and Steve, thank you, not just for the time, but also for, um, yeah, for obviously having a look through the journal, taking your time out and doing that. And it, um, yeah, we appreciate your feedback, obviously, to, you know, seasoned uh, industry experts. So it's good for us to kind of get your, your feedback on that as well. Yeah, we do. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for listening to this week's Air Mind podcast. If you have enjoyed this podcast or any of our past podcasts, we would be delighted if you could rate the podcast on whichever service you use, or even better, leave a review. Thank you also to our podcast sponsor, the Society of Technical Analysts, the STI. You can go to technicalanalysts.com to find out more about their services and to explore becoming a member of the STI. As a reminder, at Air for Mind, we focus on trader and investor personal growth and development. We offer coaching programs which are geared towards developing the key human, personal and behavioural skills that are so vital in helping people grow their performance and take their trading or investing to a higher level. Our clients come from a range of backgrounds from across the world. These include leading portfolio managers working at some of the world's largest hedge funds, asset management firms and sovereign wealth funds. We also work with investment banks and some of the world's largest commodity and energy trading businesses. Our clients also come from a myriad of other backgrounds, including family offices, proprietary trading firms, as well as many serious private retail traders. In addition to trade and investor coaching, our services extend to executive, leadership and team coaching with a specialist focus on financial markets, investment and risk businesses. To know more about our services, visit our webpage alpha-mind.net or email us info at alpha-mind.net or visit the Alpha Mind blog page for more contact information. If you would like to sign up for our regular newsletter, you can do so on the page link at the top of the Alpha Mind blog. And you can also listen to our podcast on our new Alpha Mind YouTube channel. Finally, you can follow us and connect with us on social media. We are active on LinkedIn in our own names, Stephen Goldstein and Mark Randall, or through the Alpha Mind group on LinkedIn, which is over 15,000 members. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our handles are Alpha Mind 101 and Alpha Mind 102. We wish you well, stay safe and have a great week.